Today we're taking a look at a new secret dog tag in Battlefield 1 titled A Conflict and this continues on the story of the secret Masterman dog tag a beginning from a couple of months ago. At this point in time it's clear that this is BF1's version of the Phantom program and it's building up to something much bigger. The new dog tag features the skull image that we're all familiar with now referencing the Phantom program and with the description the voices have been silent far too long. A W and possibly H is seen on the dog tag too as a door knocker. WH could be in relation to Wellington House, which was Britain's war propaganda bureau during World War I, led by Charles Masterman. In Battlefield 1's alternate history, it seems that Masterman wasn't just involved with propaganda and instead more spooky, sinister plots. Let's take a look at how to unlock the dog tag then. It's quite complex and only the most dedicated of phantoms will go through this. All of these steps were discovered by the Battlefield Easter Egg Discord community and I've linked their full guide down in the description below if you'd like to read about it in more detail. Also you have to do this in a ranked server, it will not work on private passworded servers. Keep in mind too that if the map restarts everything will change and be reset. You've got to do this in one go and it will take some time. Here we go then, following the July patch to the game, a coded message was discovered here outside of the chateau on the map Soissons. It's some picture clues with a string of letters. It doesn't make much sense, but the pictures can be interpreted as instructions. As such, if you use a four square cipher with the keywords master and man, there's our boy again, master man. It was also the last decoded Morse message from the previous secret dog tag hunt. And then if you reverse the remainder of the alphabet, you'll uncover this message. Inside the chateau when all is dark, there you go and you will find the sparks. So let's head into the chateau nearby and you'll find several light sources there. Lights on the walls, ceilings and candle holders. Destroy the lights by shooting them and destroy the candles with melee attacks. When you destroy the last light source you'll hear some strange noises coming from above you in the attic to indicate that the next step has begun. Now if you go prone at the bases of the candle holders you'll see an interact prompt. There are seven of these candle holders in total in the chateau and the goal here is to light all seven candle holders at the same time by pressing the buttons on them. But this is tricky because each candle holder will control on and off states for other candle holders and also the functions of the interact buttons are totally different every time the map restarts. So there's no surefire guide of showing you how to do this at the moment. Some people have just got lucky with it and managed to light all seven candle holders in three button presses, others have brute forced it through trial and error. My method was to go to one of the candle holders, make a table and colour code it, press the button and note down which candles were affected. The guys in the Battlefield Easter Egg Discord are currently working on a better way of solving this part of the dog tag, so keep an eye out on their guide for more details. Thankfully, there actually is an easier method on solving this puzzle. On the Game Detectives website, there is an app that is linked to a, to a website that will solve this puzzle for you. All you have to do is follow the simple steps. So right here we have the candle holder solver. On here we have the map of the chateau. And as you can see, we have each candle numbered from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way 7. Along with the directions with the top being the southwest and the bottom being northeast. You're going to have to figure this out by using your minimap so you know which candles are which. Once you figure this out, go ahead and do a lap around the whole chateau so you can know which candles are which. Once you figure that out, you can then go ahead and start solving. As a little quick note, make sure you know which candles are on because in broad daylight, sometimes they can appear off when in reality they're actually on. So always check and do double checks as well. For this to solve this, you're going to interact with candle one and then take note at which candles are on. Always check to make sure candle one is on is on as well because sometimes it's easily missable. So for example, if candles one and three were lit, you're going to input one comma three always put a comma in between the numbers no spaces and then after that you're going to click submit i'm not going to submit right now because this is after the fact but after you do this you're going to repeat this step six more times seven in total 
for me, my solution was one, one, two. So I would input candles one, then one again, and then I would click two. You do not need to wait for a reset. You do not need to click candle one seven more times to return all the candles back to the original states. You can just go ahead and input the code immediately. And I will show what happens when you complete this right now. <clears throat> Next, if you go outside by the statue here, you'll see that small sandbags have appeared in strange locations on the steps. Very odd. You'll also notice that around the chateau, 16 of these wall panel tiles can now be interacted with. But what do they do? Well, this is where it starts to get really complicated. Inside the chateau, there is a black and white checkered floor. And an 8x8 area of this floor right here can be lit up. But how and what do we have to do with it? Remember those panels on the outside that we just talked about? Well, they control rows and columns inside that 8x8 grid. And when you press a combination of two panels, it will turn on a light on that grid. If you press the same combination again, the light will turn off. And guess what? The functions of the buttons are different every time the map loads. So just like the candles, you'll have to do some working out on your own to complete the next step. What is the next step then? Well, let's go back to the sandbags outside and take a look at them. The positioning of them seems important in a way, doesn't it? As it turns out, this is a key and it shows us which lights we need to illuminate on the 8x8 grid inside the chateau to unlock the dog tag. So how do we interpret the sandbags as a key then? Lots of different theories were tested, but it was an easter egg hunter called Donnie that managed to figure out the correct solution. If you separate the steps into pairs, you can apply an 8x8 grid to them like this. So it becomes 8x8, 6x6, 4x4 and then 2x2. I've taken this screenshot of my sandbags from above using the spectator camera and separated them as such. As you can see, if you get the proportions correct, each sandbag will fall into a square on the grid. And then we can use this as a key for the grid inside the chateau on the checkered floor. And then go about illuminating the correct squares by using combinations on the tiles outside. It's important that when you map out your sandbags or screenshot them from above like I did, use the northeast side of the stairs as the top. This will make things much easier for you in the future. So now we need to work out what effect pressing each of the tiles has on the grid inside the chateau. The best way to do this is to firstly get a map of the chateau where each button is numbered from 1 to 16. This one that Rad Gamer Dan made is very useful and we'll also need an 8x8 grid to represent the in-game grid. There's a couple of great ones you can use and a much more detailed explanation of this step on the Game Detectives Guide that I've linked in the description below. Also keep in mind that the top of the grid was the northeast side of the statue but the top of the grid inside the chateau on the checkered floor faces west like this. Okay so figuring out what each button combination does is a simple task but it will take you a while. Press button 1 and 2 for example and see if it makes a light appear on the grid inside the chateau. If it does write down on your grid which one it was and the buttons required to do so and then pick another combination say 1 and 3 or 1 and 5. If they make a light appear on the grid, write it down where it was and what buttons you press to do so. Hopefully you're following along. It seems a bit complicated, but in practice it makes more sense. Once you've done this enough times and have labelled all of the rows and columns, you'll be able to deduce exactly which button presses control which lights where the rows and columns intersect. So for example, if you get two ones on the same row, you know that that has to be the row for column one, so you can label it. Or if you get two fives on the same column, you know that that has to be the column for button five. So eventually you'll be able to make some logical assumptions and you won't have to map out the entire grid. When you've completed your grid enough, you'll need to light up the correct lights on it. So using your own sandbag key that we made earlier, remember the top of the sandbag key was northeast, but in the chateau, the top of it is facing west. So use the west side as the top. Once you've turned all of the correct lights on from your key, you'll hear a very strange smoke monster style noise and some smoke will appear.
very, very creepy. But what does it mean? Well, I'm sure that we'll find out in the Russian DLC. But now you should have unlocked the new dog tag. It's silver and it looks very cool. I know this is a lot of effort for a unique dog tag, but I'm guessing that eventually this will accumulate in something much bigger and better, like a unique weapon unlock or a special camo. Remember, the dog tag is only awarded to the person who presses the final activation of the light grid. Not everyone in the server is going to get it when it's activated, it's just the last person who presses the final button. Today I'm going to show you how to unlock the secret Battlefield 1 dog tag called an Omen. This gold dog tag continues the line of the Masterman Phantom program in the game and can be unlocked in a few simple steps. To do this you'll have to join a game of Conquest on the map Zabrugga from the Turning Tides DLC. I'd recommend you do it on an empty server by yourself all in one go. Don't leave the server or get kicked for being AFK either. When you're on this map, the first thing you need to do is head over to the docked boat near the E-Flag. After a couple of minutes, the Infiltrator Elite Kit will spawn in the cabin here, and An you need to pick it up. Kit is available near your local When you have the infiltrator kit equipped, head all the way back down to the west side of the port. Swim across the broken bridge and climb this water tower here near the A flag. When you get to the top of the tower, you'll need to record a video or audio recording of your game. On PC, you can use free programs to do this, such as Shadowplay for apps or OBS. And on consoles, you can use the built-in DVR recorder. As soon as you're recording, climb to the very top and stand still. You're going to hear a strange smoke monster sound followed by Morse code repeating a phrase which is around 15 to 20 seconds long. This will be a version of a Latin poem called Dulce et Decorum es pro patria mori, and when translated means it is sweet and proper to die for the fatherland. Keep in mind that your version of the Morse code that you're going to hear is unique to that round of the game, so you will need to decode it for yourself. You can do this by importing your audio or video file into a free program like Audacity. I've linked it down in the description below. When you've got your audio file in there, change the view mode to spectrogram, split stereo to mono, select your audio and add a normalize effect with these values. As you can see now, the Morse code is very clear and you should write it down. And that translates to ULCET, DECUM, EST, PRRI, AMORI. If you're having trouble decoding your Morse code message, you can always jump into the Battlefield Easter Egg Discord, which I've linked on screen and down below, and ask for help in the Omen Dog Tag Help channel. Once you've wrote your Morse code down, you can use this website here to translate it. Now, when you do that, you'll notice that there are certain letters missing from the original Latin phrase. This is not a mistake. As you can see in my message, the missing letters from left to right were D-E-O-R, O -P -A -T, and we'll use these as a code later on. Now thankfully for you guys, the next step has been made exponentially easier by a member of the Battlefield Easter Egg community called Cactus. He created a website that's going to help us out here and you can find that at morstobuttons.herokuapp.com, link down in the description below. If you go to this website and enter either your unique round Morse code or translated Morse code message and click solve, it will bring up a solution for you. So keep this page open for now, you're going to need it very soon. Before we do anything with this though, let me show you something in game so you can better understand what comes next. Back on Zabrugga there are two large buildings located here and here. Go and take a look at them. One is labelled building number one and the other building number three. Inside each of these buildings are four light machines. You'll notice that you can interact with the lights here too. You can turn them on or off. Pretty straightforward. In this instance, an on light represents a dot in Morse code, and an off light represents a dash. So what you have to do is input your complete 8 digit number that you should now have from the website we just linked in Morse code on these machines. So the website here has decoded my missing letters into numbers using a key, 
and then translated them into a Morse code, which we can see here. And as you can see, really useful. The website here lets us know exactly which light should be on and which should be off for your unique code. I'm gonna walk you through my example here. Let's start in building number one and go from left machine to right machine. The left machine in each room is number one, the next is two, then three, and finally four. Okay, so reference the website when you're doing this to get your code, and it should be straightforward from here. When so you've completed this, if you've done it correctly, you'll be rewarded with the secret dog tag and a spooky encounter. Watch out. Trooper kit is available near your location. Kind of sounds like somebody carrying keys on a chain, opening a door, and something horrific escaping. What could it be? Some kind of spirit or a demon? I'm sure we'll find out in the Apocalypse DLC exactly what's been going on this whole time. You guys know how much I love easter eggs. Well, we've been gifted with one last one for BF1 and it's excellent. This is your prize, the Peacekeeper. A revolver that not only looks epic, it's got some amazing animations when you pull it out. I love this thing and it's a really nice prize at the end of the hunt. The guys over on the Easter Egg Discord have outdone themselves again with all of their hard work and found this. So. How do you get it? Well, this one has a few stages, but thankfully none that are that tedious or difficult. But be warned, the last part does require you to have done the previous Easter egg steps. So if you haven't, you're going to need to do those first. And there are video guides on my channel if you want to learn how to unlock them and I'll link them all in the description below. If you've already done them though, congratulations and let's take a look at how to unlock the Peacekeeper. Step one is to head to the River Song. In between the E and B flags, there's half a buried electrical device that has five interactable lights. The idea here is to input Morse code using a system of light on means dot and light off means dash. Simple enough. But what is it that we're inputting exactly? Well, you're inputting the number 0627. So that's going to be dash 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 dot 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 dash 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 dot 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 and that number came from the escalation skin <clears throat>
Once you've inputted all of it, you'll hear a spooky sound, as always. The lights are now flashing with Morse code and it says Attic Switch for Wellington Channel. Escalating Death Count, report headshots by group most to fewest. Open and close with none. It's a bit cryptic, so what we need to do now is head over to the house over on the A flag, the one next to the barn. And there's a hidden switch in the chimney, so use some C4 or a limpet mine to destroy the side of the house. If you don't see a switch, don't panic, I had to throw down a second mine before it showed up. Interact with the button and guess what? You'll hear a weird sound. You then need to head back to the electrical console we were just at, and this time you'll notice that the lights are different. We now need to enter another sequence, this time 0322110. So that's dash 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 dot 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 dash dash dot dot dash 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 dot dot dash 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 dot dot dash 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 dot dash 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 dot dash 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 dash. Why this number? Well the previous Morse code told us to report the headshots and again on the escalation skin there are skulls with bullet holes that corresponds so all the clues are there for us to find. Now once you've inputted this code correctly you'll hear a sound and you'll now hear an unlock noise as well. This means you've got the first dog tag you need unlocked, Angel Sighting. Pay close attention to what the dog tag's description says though. Living without a head I get jealous of my sisters. In a regrettable fit of rage I blindly lash out, clipping the wings of my sister to my right and destroying the head of the sister to my left, lunging forward after my third sister revealed her absence, most likely having fled. My fourth sister cleaved me in two, leaving nothing but my legs. She remains fully intact, protecting our secrets. Very weird and it's a riddle, but this led us to Caporetto, and here you'll find the statues of angels. This one is pretty straightforward. The statue in the centre, we need to destroy the entirety of it, leaving the base intact. Then for the statue on the left, we need to destroy the head, make sure all of it is gone. The middle statue needs its torso removing, this may take some time if you happen to have a poor weapon choice like me, but you will get there. And the last statue, the one on the right, requires you to shoot off part of the wing. Once you've done that, you'll hear another sound. Well, it's more like screaming. I don't know if this actually works, but... PTSD from the ship, but I don't care. A
that easter egg really scary that one now head down to the fifth statue and there's an interactable button there it is press it and the statue will explode and you'll once again hear the unlock sound and this time you've gained another new dog tag called belly of the beast once again pay close attention to the description it reads the key to the entrance of hell is unknowable Yet the prisoner somehow knew. The seemingly mindless valve scrawlings are more than a code, they're a map. Polaris guide me. If I start with the fewest steps and discard any bloody clues, I may just uncover the source of the poor creature's madness. And this will lead us to the map Passchendaele, but before we get there, make sure that you've got at least one of the previous easter egg skull dog tags equipped, along with the belly of the beast and the escalation skin. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. I unlocked the Peacekeeper with the Conflict dog tag equipped on the front, and on the back I had the Belly of the Beast dog tag equipped. And of course, when you're in-game on Passchendaele, don't forget to equip the Escalation skin on the M1917 for support. So on Passchendaele, head to the E-flag under the bridge. It's pretty close to the German spawn, and there's a tunnel there with a Munitionschlager sign at the top. If you smash it, it will reveal the Phantom Skull, and you'll notice two plungers in either corner. It's more Morse code. This time though, the code. Well, we kind of already got told the code in the description of the dog tag. The entrance to hell is unknowable. So to make life easy, follow this pattern. And if you enter the code correctly, take a step back and after a short amount of time, the tunnel will explode, allowing you to enter. There is another plunger ahead of you, and when you press it, you'll be released through a trap door into the tunnels below. Now these tunnels are dangerous, head the wrong way and gas will kill you. So you need to head in the following compass directions, pressing a plunger at the end and dropping into the next section each time. And these directions were found by decoding the scrolls on the wall that were part of a previous clue in the Fort Vaux easter egg leading up to the BF5 reveal. Now before we show the correct sequence, just a couple of tips for you. Make sure you regain to full health before pressing the plunger as the trapdoors seem to be a safe place from danger. Don't worry if you take smoke damage because you can heal on the trapdoors. That being said, the fall damage can be a bit random at times, so be a little bit careful. With that said, if you've got the required dog tags on and are using the escalation skin, follow these directions and you'll unlock the peacekeeper. Use the compass in the bottom left and the first direction we need to go is west. Use the plunger drop down and then head east. Now go south, west, east, west, west, north, south, west, north, west, south, west, south. If you do everything correctly, follow the directions that I just said, eventually you'll make it to the end of the puzzle. And the prize, there it is on the table, the Peacekeeper. Pick it up and you'll be treated to some excellent animations. And you'll also notice the word Simpson made out of wooden planks on the floor there. And this is probably a reference to Kevin Simpson. If you remember back in Beer 4 days, the Phantom program was kicked off with Kevin Simpson 1942. So is this his predecessor? Is he a time traveller? Who knows, maybe we'll find out more in BF5. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. I see it! I see it! <gasps> there it is! Oh, I thought you were gonna die from that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> nice.
Nice. <laughs> and then there it is, Simpson. The original, just, the original man. I just read Simps, and I was like, no, eh. do. Well. The original Battlefield Phantom program for Battlefield 4 was started with the name Kevin Simpson. This is an homage to it. get this gun. No, I just gotta wait because this is a little cinematic. It's Morse. It's Morse oh code. More Morse code? <laughs> there has to be more. <gasps> I've done it. I've fucking done it. <laughs> 